Hey there, and welcome to the third complete retouch, section three. In this section, we're gonna be going even further into hair. She's got a ton of hair, and we're gonna do a great job taming it and uh, making it look exactly how we want it to look. All right, let's go ahead and open our hair group that we created in our last section, and we're gonna create a new layer here. And then inside of this layer, basically I'm just gonna grab our healing brush tool, and I'm gonna sample areas right outside of this hair, and we're gonna start healing away some of these flyaway hairs. So sample the area that you want. In this case, it's just gonna be the background. All right, and then we just paint right over top of the hair. Now the trick here is you don't wanna to go too far in. Like I don't wanna to try to get rid of that hair or even the stuff that's like that close. I'm just taking care of like the flyaway stuff out here. All right, and I find that if you try to clean hair up like too much, it kind of just gets to the point where it doesn't look like real anymore because hair really does, you know, like kind of go everywhere. And if you don't let that happen in your photo, then it's like, it, it just doesn't seem real. Like the, it, it seems off. Um, so that's, that's why I recommend like kind of sticking to the outsides here. Don't really worry about, you know, going going and like cleaning and making this like a perfectly straight line because um, that's pretty much never going to look real. All right. Now this hair on the bottom here, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool. So I'm going to hit P for the pen tool. We're going to click and drag down in this way here. Drag all the way down here. Okay. And then we're going to click here and drag down this way. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a pen path that follows along this shirt. There we go. Now with that pen path, I'm gonna right click and go down to make selection. We're gonna feather that by two pixels. Okay, so now with that selection active, that's the only place I can edit anything. Like if I grab my brush tool, I can only paint inside of my brush in that area, right? If I had my clone stamp tool, whatever, anything, I can only paint inside of this area. So I actually am gonna use my brush tool. And hit B for the brush tool, and then I'm just gonna start sampling these colors and painting them in. Because it's just, you know, just kind of like a blurred out background. It's painted and no problem. Now, if you need to see what you're doing a little bit better, just hit Control or Command H, which will hide your selection. And that's gonna actually allow you to see what you're doing. So you don't see those little like dots. All right, there we go. So you see how quick that was to get rid of that? Not difficult at all. All right, let's continue to go in here using our healing brush tool. So J for the healing brush tool. All right, you can use the brush tool here. You can really just use any anything you feel comfortable with between the brush tool, the healing brush tool, the clone stamp tool. All of those are going to do a good job. when it comes to dealing with flyaway hairs. All right, now if you get something like this when you're using the healing brush tool, that's because it's trying to like, basically, it's trying to allow everything to blend together, which can look pretty weird on hair. So if you do get that, Grab your clone stamp tool and try using that instead. That's going to create direct copies, which is not going to try to blend anything. All right. There we go. All right. Now, whenever I do this with hair, usually I try to go in. There we go. And make this look a little bit more natural slash realistic. I'll do that in just a second using nothing more than the brush tool. And you'll see it's gonna really, really help out. All right, clone stamp tool, a little bit about around the edge there. Kind of just bringing that way in, actually. This is kind of nice, using a large brush and kind of just painting it in there. 
with the clone stamp tool. Alright. Now I'm, you know, always keeping in mind I've got layer masks at my disposal, I've got all kinds of different tools, and I can go ahead always go in and paint the brush or sorry, paint some of the hair back with the brush tool. So I'm not really ever like that worried about getting rid of some of this hair. All right, now we'll see from like, you know, this level of zoom how that looks. I think it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. We'll put a layer mask on this layer and then anywhere that looks kind of weird, we'll just layer mask out. All right, like that. There's a little bit of fuzz around there. All right. Looking good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool and I want to make some hair. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this color. Choose a very small brush. We'll just kind of play around right here next to it. Yep, that looks appropriate. All right, now what we're gonna do is on a new layer, I'm just gonna start painting my own flyaway hairs. All right, they'll be organized and closer to the head. This is really pretty easy to do with dark hair because you just really just paint one color. <laughs> and you can see I'm just like, Kind of following the direction of the hair here. Cover up those little areas. You know, anything my hair would naturally do, that's what I'm gonna do with my brush. So, a couple of these are gonna kind of go off the head a little bit, but there we go. All right, it's awesome. All right, and what we get is we still have flyaways, so the hair looks real. It just looks a lot more like tame. All right, now we'll sample some of these colors, which are a little bit lighter, and we'll paint a few of those in. Cool, and there we have that. All right, let's create a new layer. That looks pretty good. And we'll do a couple more like flyaways out here because it's, this area especially just looks a little bit like too good. Okay, looking good. Let's go ahead and see the before and the after with the hair so far. So there's our before and our after. All right. Now on the outside, that looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and see what we can do on the inside here. I'm gonna go back to my frequency separation and I'm gonna see about painting a new layer here to kind of get away some of this hair here. So we'll grab our 200 pixel retouching brush and now we're going to sample and paint all of the color you can see there's if I turn the texture off this is the, just the color that I need to take care of here so painting on top of this layer as long as this looks like really nice and smooth and blended then we're good to go Oh, this whole layer is only 70%, 77% visible. Let's go ahead and bring it back all, all the way to 100 there. All right. So we've done a good job of getting away that dark area for the hair. Let's paint it in just a little bit more. All right, now on this layer, which is my texture layer, all I have to do is clone stamp my current layer, and I'll just go from over here and clone stamp away. And all my color is already taken care of. So right now, all I'm clone stamping is texture. 
it's a really, really great way to get rid of hair on like a mass scale like this. Because uh, I'm able to clone stamp. I get clone stamp from here over here. And you can see it's not working with my color at all. Like <laughs> now it looks like I've got skin texture over my hair, which looks totally weird. But you can see I'm able to completely remove all of the hair while keeping my texture and my color intact because they're on separate layers, which is just amazing. All right. And if I don't think that the color is right, like it's not perfect, just go in here and grab my brush tool and start painting my colors in. There we go. That looks much better. Let's see if we can do the same thing on our head. So I'm gonna make that layer invisible. So now I can see kind of what I'm working with here. Sample this color and paint right over top of wherever we've got some hair that I wanna remove. All right, and as long as everything blends in really well, like color-wise, Let's zoom out a little bit more to make sure that it does. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, now let's pick up our texture back again. And then here, all I have to do is on my frequency separation high pass, I'm just gonna grab my clone stamp tool and we're gonna start clone stamping some of the texture Now my goal here is not to get rid of all the hair. It's just to pull a little bit of the hair that's on her face back. All right. <laughs> Looking good. So this area looks a little bit funky, right? Yes, it does. All right, so what are we gonna do here? Well, first thing I need to do is just correct my color a little bit because it's looking a little bit like grayish and we really don't want that. All right, and then I'm gonna just bring back some texture. I think I can do this in a new layer by grabbing S for the clone stamp tool, sampling the current and below. And there we go and just painting that on a new layer. So just painting it, grabbing a different portion of her forehead, basically. Now I'm gonna change my layer from normal down to darken. All right, and just rotate that around. Because again, the only thing that I need really is that nice trans transition between um, no hair and hair. So by painting that in from another layer, All right, now we have our transition. Not too difficult. All right, let's go in here and I'm gonna grab the brush tool, command plus again, a few times. Brush tool, and we're gonna paint some hair. Let's make our brush really nice and small. All right. Hmm. Made a weird looking hair. Let me paint some hair in here, kind of fill in her scalp a little bit. All 
right. Looking good, guys. Looking good. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but I think it looks great. All right, let's see the before and the after with that hairline. Whew. Much better. Much better. Before and the after. Yeah, it's a really nice hairline, and it definitely looks real. All right, guys, the hair looks great. Now, there's one little area right up here that kind of doesn't have as much skin texture as I would like. So I'm gonna show you a great method for duplicating skin texture. First thing we're gonna do is create a new layer and I'm gonna clone stamp her face, just grab S and clone stamp her face onto a different place, just like that. Okay, so on its own layer, we have this. Now what we're gonna do is extract the texture. So to do that, I need it to be first black and white so it doesn't mess with my color. So Shift Command U is going to allow me to change it to black and white. Next, we need to extract the texture. And we're going to do that with a high pass filter. So let's go to filter, other, and here to high pass. Okay. And you want to choose something where you can see skin texture pretty well. You can see here, I'm really unable to see skin texture. And this gives me something way too much. I want, you know, something right about here that really does define the skin texture, but doesn't give me a ton of extra details. All right. That looks great. Let's go ahead and hit OK. So this is what we have on a new layer now. Doesn't seem that helpful. However, if we change the layer blend mode from normal down to overlay, basically we have skin texture now that we can put anywhere we want over top of our image. So let's zoom in. You can see this area doesn't have a lot of skin texture. But if I move this right over there, I can put skin texture there. I'm just going to put a black layer mask on this to make it invisible. Alt or Option, click on my layer mask. All right, and then here on my layer mask, I'm just gonna paint white right over here where I felt I needed a little bit more skin texture. And now, let's just turn this off and on. You can see where I was lacking skin texture before, now I have it. And if I'd like some over here, well, I'll just duplicate this layer, fill the layer mask with white, Put this in like the correct position that looks pretty good make the layer mask black and then paint white right over here again and then we've got skin texture added back not only that but it's the actual model's skin texture which is really really nice all right we've got a couple more hairs to take care of we'll go ahead and put those two in our hair group just a really cool technique that i wanted to show you guys All right, there we go. Go in here with our healing brush tool. Take care of some of these flyaways. Here towards the actual ear, we'll just use the clone stamp tool. <laughs> just making sure I'm not like totally destroying the shape of her ear here. What is that? I don't know. I think it started out as an ear. some more detail. On top of there, let's make this 
invisible and then visible back again. All right. Very nice. Now let's go ahead and duplicate one of those texture layers and I'm going to pay, put it right over top of the ear so we have skin texture back, right? Because we were kind of basically just painted it away. Oh, that's nice texture there. Let's hit Command or Control I on the layer mask and then paint all the skin texture back. So you can see I just basically painted with my brush tool over top of there to get rid of some of that hair. And now I just added skin texture back, which is awesome. A little too much, so I'll just lower the opacity. And now we'll come back in with a small, small black brush. And clean it up. There we go. So there's our before and our after with our ear. I don't think I've ever repainted an ear. I don't even know that that looks better. You know what? Let's just leave that, guys. We're just going to leave it. Sometimes you'll do that and be like, eh, kind of looked better before. Um, that's okay. That means you should just continue going with the before. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after here. So here's our before and the after. Looks wonderful. All right, guys, that is it for the hair. In our next section, we're going to be going in and dodging and burning and further refining our face. We'll see you then.